G'day Fools, I'm Scott Phillips, the Motley Fools Chief Investment Officer here in Australia and welcome back to the very first new filming of a Motley Fool Stocks in Focus video for 2022 and I am delighted to be joined by the great man himself, Trevor Machetti. G'day Trevor, how are you? I'm good, Scott. How are you? Um, mate, you know, happy New well. Year. <laughs> Thank you, mate. And to you too. We did do some videos on the channel just to keep people interested while we uh, had a bit of a break. But we are back with brand new filming as of last week and this week. So this is the very first Stocks in Focus video that's going to go live, which is pretty exciting for this year. Mate, we're going to talk about a company that, by rights, should be slow, boring, low profit, commoditized. I don't, I, if, you, if you'd ask me to pick an industry and say... A company should launch something new in this industry and try and take the world by storm. And in fact, maybe we should even like it as an investment. I don't know if you do or not, by the way. We'll get to that at the end. <laughs> but it would not be uh, internet and telecommunications. And yet, you're going to talk about a business that seems to have captured plenty of people's attention. The business, of course, is Aussie Broadband. The code is ABB. Let's, before we get into the investment merits or otherwise, mate, let's unpack the business I'm going to assume it does broadband because it's called Aussie yeah. Broadband. <laughs> but give me give me the rest of the story. <laughs> yes, Scott. I mean, uh, like you rightfully said, uh, telco is not one of those industries where you get excited about. But um, not generally. Uh, not generally. Yes, definitely. But I mean, also broadband. So just a high level overview. The company, you know, provide um, fiber internet connections. Uh, or it's, it, it, it's actually what essentially is called a retail. It's a retail internet service provider, which means that they provide uh, the internet connection using on the back of the uh, NBN uh, fiber network. Uh, so in Australia, right, we, we normally ha we had like four big giants, which is like Telstra, TPG, Focus, and Optus that controlled like over 90% of the market. And as the incumbents, they do what incumbents do, right? They, at some point in time, they, they stop focusing or they stop obsessing on customer service. And then you then get this new company, which is like a disruptor coming in, in the form of uh, Aussie Broadband. So the company has been disrupting and, dis like you said, has been um, causing waves within the telco space. Uh, they initially started with a focus on residential areas, and their go-to-market plan was to partner with property developers. You know, So when there's a new area being developed, they'll partner with them, and then they'll lay out the fiber connections uh, in those, in those uh, property areas. But what really makes the company exciting is their obsession with customer service. And like, again, this is something that we do not expect within the telco industry. <laughs> exactly. So the company has invested quite significantly in terms of their sales and marketing. And most importantly, they've invested quite significantly in terms of automating processes. Right. So when you go on the Aussie broadband to hire to to, to to like buy your Internet plan, the entire process to and from is automated, which makes it easier for customers to onboard and also which makes it easier for client service. So the, that has been their bread and butter or at least their go to market strategy. And then last year they acquired uh, a company I think it's called Over the Wire, which is a, which was their push into the enterprise and corporate um, um fiber internet uh, plans. Uh, so that acquisition went through last year and the company has been growing quite quite significantly. I mean, just high level, just to give you some numbers, um, in terms of, in, in FY21, Aussie Broadband grew its customer connections, which is essentially the number of new customers is acquiring by 50% year over year. I mean, this is quite significant for a telco industry that barely grows by more than inflation in terms of on a year to year growth. So it just gives you the scope around um, the quality and the attractiveness of this company when it comes to customer value proposition. It is amazing, mate. As you, as you mentioned, the customer love out there, every time I complain about my Telstra internet service, I should describe my Telstra shareholder too for the rest of this video. Um, every time I complain about it on Twitter, someone says, you should try Aussie. In fact, not just one person. I get six or eight people say, try Aussie Broadband, mate. They're great. And again, as you say, like a, like a telco, you wouldn't expect um, people to love their telco so much to actually genuinely, like, proactively recommend it to other people, particularly strangers on the internet of all things. Um, so that's saying something. But also the business is growing quickly, as you mentioned. The share price has been growing quickly as well. So people are sitting up and taking notice. It's a fascinating life cycle story. Man, I'm going to take it down a very small tangent before we get back to the story. Because if you think about business, and this is hopefully for our viewers, a bit of a bit of a business lesson here. Because if you're one of a few big incumbent players in any industry, it's absolutely in your interest to keep your costs as low as possible, put your prices as high as possible, assume there's not going to be much customer churn. By the way, it sounds like I'm talking about our banks, so make, maybe make that, <laughs> make, that, uh, make that link if you want. 
But, you know, there's not a lot of incentive, right, for the big guys who are already super profitable. Their percentage margins on their current customers are high. Why put more cost and effort and attention into customer service when you don't have to? Because where else are they going to go? Yeah. And it's one of those things that becomes its own gravity for such a long time. And everyone gets used to the way it's done. And we all grumble about it. A bit like cable companies in the US. We all get used to it. We all grumble about it. We kind of live with it. Until someone yeah. comes along with a better mousetrap, a better idea, yeah. probably a bit of backing because you've got to have somebody to start these things. But the whole idea of the retail internet service provider, the retail ISP, as you mentioned, yeah. on the back of the NBN was the circuit breaker in the sector yeah. that allowed new players to say, hang on, we want to, we want to, yes, we're selling the same thing, but we want to be known for something different and offer yeah. something different. And it really, it's just a really remind, real big reminder. Even if someone, I would have said, personally, probably five years ago, why would you bother starting a, a new retail ISP? You can't compete with Telstra. They're too yeah. big, too <laughs> ugly, too, you know, they're going to kill you. Yeah. But the, the, the leveling of the playing field, the NBN, really did give people the opportunity, like Aussie Broadband, mm. to jump in the market and say, we're going to do it differently and try and win some customers. And thus far, at least, seems to have worked. Yeah. No, Scotty, I think you're absolutely right. And they are winning customers. It's amazing, like, uh, both retail and right now also corporate and enterprise customers that are really moving to Aussie Broadband. Yeah. Again, is that whole point around having a better mousetrap and also just, you know, uh, creating a very compelling and you know compelling customer value right. proposition yep. journey, so that you know yep. the whole process of onboarding and also in terms of if anything's wrong with your internet connection, I mean when you call us a broadband, you mm -hmm. you are sure that's going to be fixed within the next thirty seconds. So it's yeah. that whole process around you know quality customer value proposition, and definitely it is resonating with the market. It's incredible. Now, obviously, we both are impressed by what the company's done so far. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to say I'm a little. I don't. I feel sorry for Telstra, but I think this, this is the, the, so. Again, for, for those people watching who aren't necessarily thinking about Aussie broadband, do because Trevor's going to talk about it. But if you own Telstra, you got to think about okay, what should Telstra have done? Should they have added a whole lot of cost for no growth, just see if a competitor, or do you allow a competitor to have a little bit of space in their own space? You think, well, okay, well, I've got two bad choices here. Either I put up costs <laughs> and, and and don't lose customers, but lose money or make less money. Or I keep my costs where they are, keep my loyal customers where they are, let the disloyal ones go anyway, still make less money, but, but more than I would have otherwise. There, there's, there's no great choice here. And that's probably, you think about some of the older businesses in the market that get big, get stable, start making more and more margins. We like higher margins, but they are their own, I won't say seeds of destruction, that's too over the top, isn't it? But they, they are their own problem. Their own, they create their own problems, right? Because Telstra doesn't want to lose margin now to fight Aussie Broadband. It doesn't want to lose customers either. But it's kind of stuck trying to work out how to combat it. They did try a second brand, which I think was probably what they were trying to do as an answer. But it is a reminder if you own bigger, slower growing companies or more mature companies, you've got to be ever careful, ever ever concerned about that risk. You become too big and too successful. It yeah. becomes its own potential risk in itself, right? Yeah, Scott. But I think, I mean, for, for the incumbents, right, there are other ways of doing it. For I think number one is... Right now, so many companies, especially like whether it's uh, customer facing companies, you can really invest in technology, right? Yeah. Just to make the whole customer journey in terms of whole customer service quite, quite nice, right? So it can be a once off upfront cost, but technology, we know that in the long run, technology lowers costs. Right, so you can automate a lot of processes mm -hmm. along the way. It can really, really lower cost. It can be a once-off or you know for a, for a space of time a high cap expense. But in the long run, we know that technology lowers cost because I, like I think like what you rightfully said, right? Uh, first of all, you've got these customers on the margins that move away, right? And you say, okay, they can go to us broadband. That's fine. But then those customers, when they become advocates for right, your competitor, exactly. then now you're in trouble because mm -hmm, customers mm -hmm. tend to trust other customers. Like you said, when you've got your uh, problem with your internet and people <laughs> say to you, move to Aussie Broadband. So it's not Aussie Broadband that's telling you, it's uh, your right, friends, right. your colleagues, your family that's telling you to move to Aussie Broadband. And that right. is a very, very powerful, um, you know, like marketing, um, actually a, a, a zero cost marketing uh, for Aussie mm -hmm. Broadband, but it's actually very, very powerful. So I think the incumbents Absolutely. should, and whether it's also telco or, or like what you said in banking, invest <laughs> a lot into technology, right? That really just creates a much more seamless experience for the customers. We'll talk about the future of banking at another time, Max. That's a topic <laughs> I'm fascinated to talk to you about, but let's get back to Aussie Broadband because I've already led you down enough cul-de-sacs. Let's go to the investment itself. I, I tried to get down to that path. I couldn't let myself, but, uh, but let's go this time. Let's talk about, in, in turn, the positives, the bull case, the why I'd buy Aussie Broadband shares. Then you can give me the negatives and tell me why I should sell them. Let's start with the positive. What's the investment case you'd make if you're trying to convince me and our viewers to buy <laughs> shares in Aussie Broadband today? 
Sure. So I think, uh, so the way that I think of a view of the broadband, this is a classical d- disruption story, right? Because number one, you've got a market that is 90% controlled by the incumbents, the top four, right? And right now, of the broadband, they are plus or minus 5% market share, right? Yeah. And they are definitely stealing market share. If you look at last year, they grew connections, which is essentially your proxy for market share, 50% year over year. So mm. they are growing far much more faster than the incumbents and they are stealing market share. And, and there's always that, um, what you call it, um, you know, when you're in a company, you, you, you then get into this tight spot about how do you respond to right. this uh, versatile company. So that's the first thing. The market is big and there's still a lot of opportunity for the company. And then secondly, I really like, uh, you know, the culture in the company, especially the management, the management, they really, really emphasize customer um, customer service. That is the biggest investment that they make. If you look at their income statement, they invest a lot into sales and marketing. They also invest a lot into client services centers because they really want to be differentiated on customer service. Now, if I, if I think about that, and if you think about internet, right, once you are happy, you, the lifetime, lifetime value from a customer mm. is extremely, extremely uh, like a large number because yeah. once you are happy, you're going to stay with your internet for the next 10, 15, 20 years, as long mm. as the service is good and as long as you, know, you are quite happy with the customer service. So you've got this long tail in terms of uh, customer retention with extremely low, extremely low levels of churn. So th- that's also another thing that I really, really like about the company. And of course, like what you said, I think, um, you know, they are, they are, they've been quite aggressive in the residential and they've also, they're also now quite aggressive in the corporate space. They're also partnering with other companies on wide label uh, solutions. I think there's one company called Energy. So I, 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 might, I might be forgetting the full name, but what they do is that uh, they partner. And when this company comes and sells you like they're, you know, uh, their their uh, uh, gas and electricity product. Mm-hmm. They also mm-hmm. provide you with broad, all the broadband package. So now right. the whole uti- so as a customer, right, you don't have to call five different utility companies mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. gas, electricity, water, and then broadband. It's all in one simple That's package for cool. a, for a customer. So mm-hmm. I think this emphasis around you know making it easier for customers. It really it in the short term it might really increase your customer acquisition cost, but in the long term it reduces chain, which means that it also improves your lifetime uh, customer value. So I think those uh, and then obviously last last point is this 5G coming, and 5G um, is really just going to be a game changer uh, for for companies and for everybody in terms of you know higher uh, higher consumption of uh, data. Uh, it's new applications and new and, and new uh, apps are like come online. And uh, right now, there's also this talk about the metaverse and all these companies like all the broadband are simply going to benefit from that and high usage of data that we expect over the medium term. Nice, man. That's a pretty compelling one. We like the company. We like the future. We like the opportunity. The business uh, competitive position looks pretty good. Yeah. So you sold me. Now unsell <laughs> me. You know, take, take me down, take me down the, uh, the bear case. Give me the, give me the reasons I shouldn't buy yeah. Aussie Bird. If I had the shares, I should sell them right now. <laughs> sure. So, so telco, telco industry by definition, right, mm-hmm. is a price take in terms of data price. So if you look at the last 10 years or so, um, there has been a pressure in terms of pricing and the cost of data has been going down over time, right? So because telco really, what you produce at the end of the day is a commodity. And as a commodity, you've got really little pricing power. So you know, also broadband like Telstra, like TPG or Focus or Optus, they will always face this pricing pressure, and which which then in turn will lead to compressed uh, margins over time. So that's yeah. obviously one thing to look at. The second thing I think, which is also uh, a function of the industry, is that telcos is really a high capex industry, right? So, um, you, uh, like if you look at most of the companies, they can be profitable on the income statement, but then if you look at the free cash flows, once you take into consideration capex spent on fiber expansion and, 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 and you know lay down new fiber it's extremely high capex industry so that's also you know it, it's but that is the virtue of the industry itself mm. because for you to stay competitive you have to keep on deploying new fiber and that is extremely extremely expensive so i think those are the key things and then probably the last one is you know they've started doing acquisitions right so, um, 
and like and the company acquisitions are a little bit tricky when you when you do them um they might appear nice on paper and everything else but in terms of execution in terms of integrating two companies that is always proved that that is always proved uh, to be quite tricky so um it's something it's a risk that investors should always pay attention to mm. Yes, uh, very easy to torch cash. We know that from uh, from past experience. Mate, let's wrap it up then. You, we've given a, a nice summary of the business, the, the category. I've tried to take you down some tangents. You've, uh, you've resisted lovely, which is great, so thank <laughs> you. Uh, we've talked about the bull case and the bear case. Wrap it up for a minute, particularly at the current price, which is doing pretty well. I haven't looked at the share price chart recently, but it was it was on a, on a bit of a tear for most of 2021. Um, yeah. At the current price, if we look out five years, so let's take us out to January 2027. By then, is it a market beating investment if we buy shares today or a market lagger, do you reckon? Well, for also broadband, I think it's a market beating. And really, I, I really put go. that, I really, I'll, I'll really put this down to they have developed an internal culture within the company that focuses on customers, all right? And I think many businesses that always focus on customers, they always tend to win in the long run, right? And so that's the first thing. So that culture, I really like it. And also the CEO is quite adamant that, that we are here to serve the customer and we are here to listen to the customer and we are here to provide a superior customer experience. And I mean, we have such companies that we've seen that have done that over the years, you know, whether here in Australia or also in the US. What it does is in the short term, right, costs are high, capex are high. But what it does is it gives you this long, right, till lifetime customer value. Once customers love you, they tend to stick around for a very, very, very long time. So I think the company is going to be market beating. And I think if for investors that are interested in the telco space, I would rather buy all the broadband than anything else. Beautiful. Lovely summary, Trev. Now, if you like what Trev has had to say, and you should because he's great, follow him on Twitter at Trev Muchedzi. One word at Trev Muchedzi. You can follow me on Twitter at TMF Scott P. I'm also on Instagram at the same handle. TMF Scott P. I'm on Facebook at Scott Phillips Money. If you want to follow the Motley Fool social accounts, you should. We're on Facebook at The Motley Fool Australia and on Twitter and Insta at The Motley Fool AU. And don't forget, while you're here, I'm supposed to say, this is YouTube, I'm supposed to say, like and subscribe. That's what I'm supposed to do. You point down there like that and you say, please hit the like button so you get lots more of this good stuff. But if you subscribe to the channel, then you'll get a notification on with your device saying, hey, new video, Trev's here again, or Kevin, or Kate, or Benny, or Ryan, or Ed, or any of the great team. Andrew, lots of them, so many of them. We have an absolute welter of high quality people. We're providing you on this platform for absolutely free. Why would you not like the channel? Why would you not subscribe? I don't know why. Do it, please, for me, or for you. Do it for you, actually, because you might just learn something like the fact that Trevor thinks Aussie broadband is a market-beating stock. There you go. Trevor, mate, thank you for your time. Thank you, viewers, for spending some time with us. We know you've got lots of other choices, so we appreciate it. From Trevor, myself, and the whole Motley Fool team. Until next time, full on. Full on.